I'm Carlton Sharp, pastor of Faith Christian Center Church right here in Beaumont, Texas. And we're here on what's happening in our neighborhood. And today, my special guests are Constable Javon Pollard and Deputy James Locke. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning, <laughs> Pastor. Good morning. Hey, listen, let's talk with you, Constable, because... I think you made a little history uh, when you got elected. So tell us a little bit about that. Just a little bit. Um, <laughs> no, I was blessed and fortunate uh, when I ran in a special election when uh, Earl White decided that he wanted to stop being the constable and become the fire chief. Uh, they had to have a special election, and so I won, and I was able to be the first woman ever elected in Jefferson County. Not only the first female, but the first black female. Correct, to, yes. Wow. Yes. So, so I mean, uh, how, how does that make you feel to be, I mean, the first woman, the first black woman to be constable? Making history is always exciting. You, you don't realize <laughs> you're making history while you're going through the process, yeah. you know, while you're running and doing all that stuff. You just know that you're after a goal and you're going for it. But, you know, by the time it's all said and done and you realize what you've done, it's, it's pretty cool. And, and you've been in law enforcement for a long time. Right, since 2001. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, you came up through the ranks. Kind of. Who'd say kind of? Kind of. Well, listen, we're here today to talk about this program that you come out with, this community outreach. What is it called? Sure. So it's called uh, Neighborhood Empowerment and Relationship Development. And for short, I've earmarked it NERD. NERD. NERD, <laughs> yes. And it's just, um, you know, growing up in the church, a pastor's kid, outreach was always on my mind. Service was always on my mind. And as an elected official, I feel like we have platforms that we can use to better the relationships, especially in law enforcement, in the community. So this is one of the platforms that I came up with, and we're using it to improve relationships between law enforcement and the community. And, and you, you've, you've uh, included uh, Deputy Locke here to, to be uh, one of the spokespersons to go out into the neighborhood and talk to everybody that he can. Deputy? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm honored to do that, and uh, I've been in law enforcement for quite a while. I know a lot of people, and I've seen a lot of things. And, uh, you know, Constable has a vision, and, you know, I just thought that I could really assist her, you know, with achieving those things, um, with, you know, just going out to the communities and talking to citizens and, and just trying to bridge the gap between law enforcement and citizens. Because both of you are part of the community. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, you live here, uh, you play here. <laughs> I mean, I mean, look, you part of the community. Absolutely. And so, Correct. so, so now let's talk about, let's talk about uh, this program, this uh, how to handle police encounters, because those who are watching today, they might say, well, look, I've encountered a police officer, so, and I've had this experience with them. And so let's talk about that. How, how, how do we encounter law enforcement these right. days? Right, so one of the things that we do, Deputy Locke uh, has been going around and talking to anyone that will let us come and speak to them about, you know, what's expected of the citizens, what's expected of us, you know, just, just to kind of help them understand why we're doing what we're doing, yeah. and then what we need them to do to kind of make things go a little bit smoother. And, and, that, and that's what's so important, because we want to go home, you want to go home, yes. every time you go out on the streets, you want to go back home. Yes. Because you have a family and all that. Right. And so, but we need to know how to handle these encounters because you see the videos on, on YouTube, on Facebook, about how people had bad encounters with police officers. Right. And right. so we want to make sure that we, in our community, have good good experiences. So, let's talk about if a person is stopped just by walking on the street and, and, and how do they, sh how should they handle the encounter? Well, basically the first thing you want to do is just is cooperate. That That's the main thing. Yeah. Um, if you cooperate, I believe it just brings everyone's level down. Um, there's there are certain things that police are also going to ask you for and ask you to do, and most of the time it's just for safety purposes. And what we want to do is just let the citizens know why police officers are asking you to do certain things and why they're asking you, you know, certain questions. And I think if they're familiar with why we're asking those questions, you know, they're more apt to to, to to, the, to communicating with us and complying. Yeah, because one of the things that, that a law enforcement officer might ask a citizen is to identify themselves. Absolutely, yeah. Deputy Locke and I both work the streets. We've worked patrols. So when an officer encounters you, they're encountering you for a couple of reasons. One, either you're violating a law or an ordinance, or they've been given a description of somebody and you fit the description. Gotcha. And so a lot of times, you know, we're going to make contact with you, whether it's on a traffic stop or it's on a pedestrian stop, but in the state of Texas, once we make contact with you 
and we ask you for your ID, then you have to you have to identify yourself. Yeah, and then one of the things that you also may do is pat a person down just to make sure that they're not uh, packing any kind of weapons. Exactly, exactly. One of the scariest things being a police officer just the unknown. Yeah. You, know, you, you approach people, you don't know if they're having a bad day, you don't know they have mental issues, wow. you don't know they have warrants, you don't know any of that. So to, to make sure that we're safe and that the person is safe, that you want to sometimes pat them down on their outer garments. And that's okay. We're not doing a search. It's just a pat down, just for weapons, just for our safety and protection. Yeah, you're not going in their pockets, no. pulling out their wallet or anything like that. It's no. just, hey, just the outer uh, garment, just to ch pat them down to make sure that they're not packing any type of uh, a weapon exactly. that could uh, harm you. Exactly. Okay? Now, and one of the things you also say is to stay calm as a citizen. M most rational people will stay calm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But, you know, we don't usually deal with people on their most rational days. But, however, most of the time, citizens will stay calm unless they're just agitated, which, you know, we come in contact with that, too. But if, if you're calm, we can remain calm, and everything kind of just goes. Because most officers have a flow and a pattern of the way that they do things. Not every time they're going to pat you down. Not every time they're going to ask right. you to step out of the car. But there are little things that will give them an indication that maybe I need to pat this person down or maybe I need to have them step out of the car. But as long as everybody is remaining calm, everything goes smoother. Yeah, yeah. Now, and one of the things you also said, uh, Deputy Locke, is that, you know, just stay calm and don't argue, you know? I mean, be civil. Absolutely, absolutely. I think if, if everyone is just calm and everyone is, is, is cooperating, it just it brings an intensity level for the whole stop. Yeah. It brings it down. Yeah. You know, I think it's really important, you know, for citizens to be familiar with their police officers, you know? If, if I had to stop you for some reason, and you put the window down, and you see it as me, you're going to say, oh, okay. Hey, I'm going to start laughing. I'm like, <laughs> exactly. Why are you stopping? But, but at that very moment, though, the yeah. intensity level goes right, away. Right, because right, Because you know me, I know you, yeah. and, and there, you know that I'm not going to do anything wrong right, to you. Right, And I know you're not going to do anything wrong right. for me. So it, everything just, you know, the intensity level goes down, and the, the stop will go much smoother. You right. Know? And that's, that's really important. And, and what about resisting? I mean... It, it, the system is set up, and I, and I tell people this, the system is set up to protect the officers on the side of the road. So it doesn't benefit anyone to resist in that moment. It, it, if you feel like you're being wronged on a traffic stop or something was unfair, there are avenues that you can take after the stop is over where you're still safe, you're wow. going on about your business, That's good. and we're not tussling and fighting on the side of the road, and it can be resolved. Um, I try to tell people as much as I can, get through the traffic stop, get through the pedestrian stop, and then later go and find those avenues. And it's usually a sergeant, a lieutenant. There's phone numbers available where you can call and say, hey, I feel like this officer was rude and unprofessional and there was no need yeah. for this, that, and, you know, whatever else. So there's, there's avenues, but the system is set up to protect us. Right. And so I, I tell people all the time, you're not going to win on the side of the road. <laughs> you're, just, you're not going to win. Now, do you have an advisory board that handles uh, citizen complaints? Uh, we have myself and my chief in, in our office. Every department has their own system set up. And, and a lot of what we're doing and talking about is our brothers and sisters are still on patrol working yeah. their jobs. And so we're being a voice and a representation for them. Because, like I said, we've done the job ourselves. And so we understand, for us, what it entails and, and how the system is set up and the laws are set up to protect us. And so Beaumont PD has their own system that they yeah. have set up. Jefferson County Sheriff's Office has their own system. Beaumont ISD has their own system. So every department yeah. has a system in place where you can go and make complaints and say, hey, I feel like this officer was unprofessional and was rude and, and whatever. Okay. Now, now Deputy, that, that, that we dealt with the pedestrian. Now, let's talk about a car stop when you have to stop a car. Uh, what I mean, what goes through your mind when you're stopping a vehicle uh, and you have passengers on the inside? Well, again, you know, the unknown is, is the scariest thing about being a police officer, and that goes for also traffic stops. Um, as far as the drivers go and the, the passengers, it's the same concept. You know, it, it's, what we want you to do is, is communicate with us. If we ask you any questions, go ahead and answer them. Um, if we ask for an ID, go ahead and ID yourself. You're a part of that traffic stop. Right, Even right. as a passenger, you're still a part of the traffic stop. Um, so it's, it's best to cooperate also. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we want to get off the traffic stop as soon as possible. Right, so right, So you want right. to go ahead, communicate with the officer, just just uh, cooperate with him, answer the questions, 
and be on your way. So now, if, if, if you just so happen to be in a traffic stop, here's a couple of things that you might want to do. Turn your car off. <laughs> turn your car off, and, and then if it's a night uh, stop, you might want to turn your internal light on. Uh, open your window. Yes. <laughs> yes. And place your hands where they can see them, right? Right. right. Okay. No, I mean, <laughs> those are all very good tips. Uh, because for us, again, you know, traffic stops and domestic violence are the two Ooh. most lethal yeah. uh, things for officers. That's where we get killed the most and we get shot at wow. and hurt the most. It's traffic stops and domestic disturbances. So our intensity level is already high. Uh, most officers, they'll leave some type of thumbprint or fingerprint on the back of the car and that's for that very reason because wow. it's just a dangerous encounter. Uh, so when your hands are visible, that brings our threat level down. When the window is rolled down, that brings, you know, our, you know, that helps us as well. And it's good to know what the laws are in your state, in mm -hmm. your area, because the laws are different in Texas than they are in Louisiana as right. it comes to ID and other things. But yes, turning off the car is very good. Hands visible is very it good as been, well. It could have been good to turn off your phone too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, praise the Lord. All right, all right. Uh, but, okay, so now you don't necessarily have the right to search a car when you stop it, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. No, so it, it, the law is also reasonable, and that's good for the citizens because that protects the citizens as well. So when law enforcement encounters you and you're the driver, depending on what they're seeing and hearing and smelling, there's only so much that uh. they can do. But if they're not hearing and smelling and seeing certain things, for their safety, they can do just a quick little search of the area that you can immediately reach. But unless they have PC to go further than that, right, they cannot. Right. And PC is probable cause. Probable cause, yes. <laughs> you told all that police terminology, and I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of quick on this thing. PC is probable cause. <laughs> correct, correct. So, okay, Deputy Locke, so, so I have a passenger in my car. Okay, what is the passenger's responsibility on that stop? Again, um, basically the passenger's responsibility is much like the drivers. You know, you want to also, you don't want to make any furtive movements. You want to keep your hands visible. Okay. Um, again, you have, if, you, if you ask any questions, you know, go ahead and answer them. Um, a lot of times officers will ask them to step out of the car, you know, just so that to get them out of the vehicle where they can see their hands. Right, And again, right, these things right. are all for safety purposes. Doesn't mean you're going to jail. Doesn't mean you've done anything wrong to that point. It could just be for safety purposes. It could be that maybe you know, the car didn't pull all the way off the side of the road uh -huh. and the officer's behind is in the street. So instead of interviewing people from the window, they get them out of the car. Gotcha. You know, so it's a lot of different reasons, you know, why an officer would do things uh, in, in relation to the passengers. Now, mentioning being off the road, uh, there is a law that states that either if a car is coming uh, by, a stop that either they pull over or slow down, correct? Talk to us about that. There, so that's what's supposed to happen. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, not everybody is getting that memo, uh, but no, that's absolutely correct. For um, emergency vehicles pulling the side of the road, uh, EMS, you know, fire, law enforcement, and I believe even records, uh, you're supposed to either slow down or pull over to the, to the, the inside lane, but um, rarely does that happen. So absolutely, Deputy um, Locke is correct. We will ask you to just come to the back where we get where if something does happen everybody's able to move and be a little bit yeah. more nimble yeah. versus just sitting in the car and just being kind of quote unquote a sitting duck if something was to happen if somebody's not paying attention and runs into the back of the vehicle or tries to sideswipe the officer or whatever yeah and again the the the, the purpose of it that you want to go home too <laughs> it's, it's, it's all about you know we're we're having to deal with several different elements at one time you're having to deal with traffic you're having to deal with you know the people that's in the car you're trying to find yeah. out who you're dealing with. So you're trying to deal with several things at one time. So you have to focus on one. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times you have to focus on getting people out of the car, you know, maybe if it's one at a time. It's whatever you feel at that particular time. Yeah. Like I said, police officers, we kind of go with a flow. And you go with kind of how you feel. You have uh -huh. a little sense. It, I don't, it's hard to explain yeah. if you yeah. feel a police yeah. officer. But sometimes we have a little sense. And someone just tell you, you know, sometimes I'll make a traffic stop and I'll go to the the passenger side opposed to going to the driver's side. Why? I don't know. It's yeah. just that sometimes you get a sense. Yeah. It, it could be a safety reason or it could just be something that says go to that to the other side. Yeah. You know, so but nine times out of ten, if we're asking you to do something 
initially is for safety purposes. Again, the, the, the key is that you, you cooperate with law enforcement because you want to go home, they want to go home. So if you're in a traffic stop, turn your car off. That way, that takes that, that idea of fleeing off the table. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I, I mean, think about it. You, you got to go through a lot of steps to cut, get, cut it back yes. on. Yes, yes, you do. <laughs> uh, keep your hands visible uh, so they can see it. And then when they ask you to do something, just do it. Now, let's talk about teenagers. So, <laughs> teenagers, I have a teenager. Deputy Locke has a teenager, and that's, you know, it, it's stressful it, it, because you want them to have that freedom to drive. But at the same time, distracted driving is very real because adults are driving distracted. And so, for teenagers, yeah. it's just through the roof. So, Ooh, the state good. of Texas has come up with uh, laws as it pertains to teens and driving. They've changed the curriculum in the school where teens have to take a class where it talks about police encounters in high school. And then they also know that, you know, when you become 16, you can only have one passenger yeah. in the vehicle. And they do that because they're trying to cut down on distracted driving because that increases the risk of getting into a car wreck or, you know, hurting themselves or hurting somebody else or getting stopped because they're creating, you know, traffic violations yeah. that they're not even paying attention because they're distracted. Now, in Deputy Locke, not only are students going through this program, but the officers also went through their, this program. Absolutely, I went through the same the same class. It's about about a month ago, and basically, it's it's to put everyone on the same page. Yeah. You know, we want to understand, you know, what you guys are expecting from us, and we want you guys to understand what we're expecting of you. And I think if we can come to a common ground, I believe we can lower the incident or the, the incidents of police officer and citizen situations. And, and you're going to civic organizations, you're going to churches, anybody with, that let you in the door, you're going, you're going to talk to them about all of this. Anyone, <laughs> anyone that will listen. We want to make sure that our, that our citizens know what police officers are asking them to do and why. You know, I just think if you understand why we're asking yeah. you to do it, you know, you wouldn't have a problem with doing it. And like I said, most of the time it's for safety. You know, we have to get back, you know, to police being viewed as the people that protect and serve. Right, right. That's good. That's good. That's good. We That's want good. to make sure you understand we're protecting, you know, it, it, protecting ourselves and protecting you at the same time. And, 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 and if you're watching today and you want to get in contact with them, all you have to do is just call 835-8450. I just put it there on the screen. It's 409-835-8450 to, to get them to come and talk to your civic organization, your church, uh, or your uh, or any, any anybody in the community that wants this talk. Just have, just call that number, 409-835-8450. And that's how you get in contact with them. But deputy, not deputy, constable. You're also doing see you're doing so much stuff in your office. <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to get all of it in. But you're also doing uh, a children's ID cards. Yes. Talk to us about that. And it's it's something that uh is not unfamiliar. It's something that, that happens. A lot of law enforcement uh agencies will put it on or or offer that service and it's just something that uh you know every six months every every school year it's good to just update your child's information yeah. because unfortunately kidnappings are still occurring human trafficking is at an all-time high and so it's very important to make sure that you have information in one place with all of your child's important Ooh, things, good. height, weight, hair color, fingerprint, a, a, a recent picture, just in case they come up missing. That's important for law enforcement to have. That's important for you to be able to have because if your child comes up missing, you're going to be so, you know, frazzled. You're not going to remember all yeah, those little minute yeah, details. Yeah. But if you can just go reach and grab a card and, and hand it, to whoever the police officer that shows up that that helps us tremendously because then we can tell the other officers looking for that child yeah. the child is you know four eight 130 pounds brown over brown you know things yeah, like yeah. that so you put an amber out absolutely wow wow so so now is this something that like you said the picture fingerprints uh and the card itself is this something that your office is doing Yes, we're doing it out of my office. We'll start doing it here in the middle and the end of August, and then it's, some, it's a service that we'll be offering ongoing. Okay, is it also, do you provide one for the parent and one for the child to put in their backpack or in their wallet or something like that? We're keeping it with the parent right okay. now uh, because, unfortunately, children can be a little uh, <laughs> forgetful and misplaced things. So uh, the, the ID kit will be laminated. That way it'll, you know, whether, you know, any, you know, wetness or anything like that, and it'll just go with the parent. Okay, all right. And so, so that's going to start next month. And so, again, here's the number that you can call. Uh, uh, Constable Pollard, uh, it, it's 
800-888-8450 and uh, get, the, get, get, get on her list to get the ID card. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, and listen, we're going we're gonna to keep this as a, uh, uh, a continual process on the things that you're doing out of your office Absolutely. because you're doing so, so many other things that we need to talk about that we just don't have time today to talk about. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so one last word from both of you. Um, again, we're, we're grateful for the opportunity and, and the platform that you have here to be able to share with uh, people. Uh, you know, the job gives us the authority to do what we do, but our behavior is what's going to get us the respect from the right. community. And so it's important for Deputy Locke and myself to come out here and be able to let people know that there are law enforcement officers and agencies that are really concerned about bridging the gap and bringing the trust back to law enforcement. So we appreciate the opportunity to be here. And Deputy, about uh, inviting uh, them, invite you to come and, and speak to them. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm always available. If I'm not available, I'm sure we can get someone from my office that will come by and, and talk to your organization. And um, just to kind of piggyback about you know what Constable just said, you know, we just want to make sure that we restore you know, the, the trust back into the citizens. Right. Not that we've lost it, because I think we have pretty good right, officers right. in our area. Yes. And I think a lot of people feel like they see things on the internet, and but those are from different states. And, um, but sometimes people look at it as, you know, one bad police officer spoils a whole all, bunch. All of them, yeah. And we, we wanna make sure that doesn't happen in our area. And, um, you know, I tell everybody, the police, we can't solve crimes alone. You know, we need citizens. Yeah, right. And but we have to have the trust of the citizens in order to be able to do our job. And so that's what we're out here doing. You know, I think the police in our area for the most part are doing a very good job. Mm -hmm. I, I so agree. We're just trying to we are just trying to, to add to what we already have, you know, as a police force, uh, just collectively in our area. Good. And uh, one more thing I wanna make sure you also put out there that we're also doing these identification kits for our seniors also. Wow. Um my my wife's grandmother um, before she passed about a month ago, um, two days before she passed, she went to um, to the doctor's office because she had headaches, and her blood pressure had gone so high to where she was um, she was disoriented and she couldn't find her way home. Wow! It was only like four blocks, you know, from the hospital, and she it was the police officer stopped her and she was disoriented. She didn't know where she was. She didn't know where she lived. She didn't know anything about herself. So we thought it'd be a good idea to also have identification cards or emergency cards, you know, for, for seniors in case That's situations good. like that happens to where they have a card maybe in their uh, in their vehicle somewhere that police know where to find and also one at home in case you do a welfare check uh, for a senior at home. You can go to that that card and you can find the emergency contact wow. number and things of that nature. So uh, so that's for children and seniors for the card. Yes. Now I got one last yeah. thing, uh, uh, Constable. Why do you call this thing nerd? <laughs> your your response is is the answer. No, it's 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 fun, um, and it's it's just a, when you hear nerd, it kind of it's just fun. It kind of just relaxes you yeah. because you don't necessarily associate nerd with law enforcement. Right, right. And so it's just one of those things that I, I felt like was just the perfect little acronym because it just kind of brings down the level. Like nerd cops, that doesn't sound right. And so that, yeah, it, 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 it's. Uh, it's, it's funny. Yeah, it's the neighborhood empowerment and relationship development that, that Constable is doing in her precinct and throughout our area. So listen, uh, again, let me put that number back on the screen again. It's 409-835-8450 if you want to get in contact with them. Have them to come to your church. Have them to come to your civic organization so they could talk about police relationships and police encounters so that, that we all will be safe and we all go home at the same time uh, uh, with safety. So again, I want to thank Constable, I want to thank Deputy for coming today to be a part of today's uh, What's Happening in Our Neighborhood. And I want to thank you for joining us and we will see you next time on our broadcast. Be blessed.